Welcome back to the Java tutorial from Ritus.com. What we have done in the previous class was a look was to look at a lot of things. Let's first revise them and then go ahead and start with what we want to do for this tutorial. Um, the first thing, which we, uh, like one of the things which we discussed during the last tutorial, was the packet statement. The packet statement tells uh, where your class is present in this helps us to organize classes into better groups the import statement helps us to tell java that these are the classes i want to make use of so it's basically the import statement here tells that the calculator test wants to use the org.junit.test so that's basically all that the import statement tells the import statement tells that uh, hey java get me all these classes i'm going to use them so that's basically what the import statement is all about we discussed what a class is a class is basically a concept uh, here the concept which we are discussing about is calculator so you can see calculator as a concept uh, something very generic that's what a class is like uh, we'll discuss a lot more about the classes a little later and then we created a method here a test method to test the uh, square method that we had a method is basically something which does something uh, doesn't it sound funny something which sound which does something okay method is basically something which uh, does a operation for you or does a calculation does a sequence of steps or some uh, something which are really related you can do a lot of unrelated stuff in a method but then you'd not be able to name that method properly usually method good methods are those which do related things and do a set of operations related to per, per particular thing and give you back an output or there would be a few methods which we'll look at like even the test squares method doesn't return anything so that's basically a void method it doesn't return anything back uh, or there would be methods of the kind square which actually returns something back here the square method returns back what it calculates so it returns back the square value um, the other thing which we looked at is the concept of writing a test class and writing a test to test the calculator class so this test class now makes sure that uh, the squares the uh, functionality of the square method is working as intended um, let's now discuss a bit about test driven development and get started on uh, the so here goes your quick guide to test driven development uh, test driven development is just a sequence of three steps um, first write a test so you know what functionality you would want so basically write the test for that functionality obviously when i write a test for the first time 95 percent of the times it would fail so make sure you see the red bar on the j unit so here you'd see a test fail and the second step is write the code for it to make it pass so just write the code and make it pass it's very simple like last time when we were writing uh, the test for calculator what we did is first return the calculator test file here as part of step one we have written the calculator test file and so uh, saw the test fail and then what we have done is write the calculator file and make the test pass and then the third important step is what we call refactoring and we'll uh, make small changes to code to make it better that's basically what refactoring means refactoring means leaving the functionality as it is we make small changes to code so that it's easily maintainable easily understandable so that's basically what refactoring step is um, test driven development is basically following these steps in order uh, to uh, program that's basically what test driven development is however uh, test driven development actually wants to be able to do uh, in an ideal test driven development scenario you should do all these three steps probably uh, like within a minute or couple of minutes so I should in within a couple of minutes once you are an experienced programmer within a couple of minutes you would be expected to if you're following test driven development then you'd be expected to write the test, write the code, 
and refactor. The basic concept is each of the steps should be really small. So if I'm writing a really big method, probably I'll pick a small chunk of it, get it working and then pick the next chunk of it, get it working and do that kind of stuff. What we'll follow during this work, uh, series of tutorials is a small variation of test driven development, which I call, which is generally called test first development. So test first development is basically I write a big test and then write the code for it and then refactor. I'm not going to follow the series of steps, series of small steps. Uh, that's the only difference between test driven development and probably test first development. There's a bit of difference on terms of design. So the, that aspect of test driven development we would incorporate into our tutorials. But the only fact is we would probably take bigger steps just to get used to the whole thing. And then probably we can start taking smaller steps. Uh, that's basically the focus of this tutorial. We'd use test first development and uh, try and solve the problem. We are creating more videos as we speak. And if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.